Hello students, uh, this is Brock Skaggs. I'm going to create this video showing how to use SOLIDWORKS in order to find information about the reaction forces associated with where our part or our structure is connected to the, the outside world. And so we'll look at a few different cases here. Um, you can see the case one being the planar truss fusing truss elements. Our case two is a cantilever beam and we'll use beam elements and supporting a distributed load. And case three down here at the bottom is the cantilever beam. It's got a concentrated force at its free end there and it's going to use solid elements in this case. Uh, just to show you some subtle differences you'll see between element types that you have to deal with here. And so you can see before you the statics um, hand calculations if you will uh, showing what we expect to get from SOLIDWORKS and we're just going to verify SOLIDWORKS is uh, giving us appropriate outputs there to make sure we didn't mess up anywhere on the input side. And so oh, let's go to case one here. It's a planar truss. Um, everything's symmetric there about the, the mid plane of the truss, if you will. Uh, 400 pound load hanging right from joint B there in the downward direction. And you can work through your statics, so use a little bit of intuition there and figure out that the upward reactions of both A and C are both going to be 200 pounds. And so let's go ahead and hop into SOLIDWORKS now. And so on all these simulations I've already went through, done the modeling, I um, actually ran the simulation. So we can go right into our static one here. Um, here's some stress plots here so you can see that the um, results have been calculated. Now to actually show the reaction forces, um, you don't do it down here. Um, you can actually come right up here to the result advisor and all I've done is click the down arrow next to it. And I can go to something like list result force which is exactly what I want. Um, in this case we only have one option, reaction forces. And so I'll go ahead and change to IPS units here. And you can see in the blue box it's expecting us to pick joints. And so you'd want to pick the joints where there's actually uh, fixtures being applied. And so in, in our case here, um, we're interested in the upward reactions at A and C. And so I would select that joint there and this joint here. And so now I can just click update. I'll go kind of normal too so we can see and you can see it gives us the reaction forces at each of those joints. Uh, you can see both of them are very close to 200 pounds. Um, one's a little bit high, one's a little bit low but definitely within the, the margin of error for what we're looking for. Uh, you can also see the directions of those loads. You can see the big green arrows pointing upward as we'd expect there and so it seems like our planar truss is working out okay. And so let's move on to case two. Case two is the cantilever beam, and here we're modeling it using beam elements. And so you can see we've got a uniform distributed load all the way across the length of the cantilever there. Uh, that is capital W, not lowercase w, so it's 500 pounds is the total downward load of the distributed load. Um, it'd be 500 pounds divided by the 72 inches would give you the lowercase w in pounds per inch of the unit. And so um, with the free body diagram there, the entire beam working through the uh, bit of static equilibrium equations, um, we can see that the upward reaction is going to be 500 pounds and the reaction moment should be roughly 18,000 inch pounds. And so again, let's go back to SOLIDWORKS and see if we can see these values. And so here we're on the cantilever beam now. And so there is my beautiful eye beam. We'll go into statics, one for the study. Um, again, you can see the uh, different stress plots as well as the displacement plot. Um, notice I am using beam elements. That's why you're kind of seeing the cut up nature of the body itself. And then again, we'll go right under the results advisor to uh, list result force. Here again, we have the reaction force. And I'll go to IPS units, select that joint that we have the constraint on there. There was a fixed constraint there and hit update. And again, I'll go kind of normal too so we can see. Uh, notice here our F sub Y is 500 pounds just as we'd expect and the resulting moment going in the counterclockwise direction from this perspective is 1.8 times 10 to the fourth foot pounds, or excuse me, inch pounds, excuse me, inch pounds there, pounds force times inch. And so 1.8 times 10 to the fourth is indeed 18,000 inch pounds, which matches our number that we were expecting from the, the theoretical calculation there. And so it looks like we're two for two at this point. And so let's see if we can go three for three here. And so let's go back, review our third case here. 
Uh, case 3 is the cantilever beam, uh, so solid elements though. And so instead of case 2 being beam elements, we're now moving to solid elements. And we've got a point force at the very far right end, uh, 10 pounds there, over a length that is just 12 inches long. And you can see um, reactions, we're expecting an upward reaction of 10 pounds for the reaction force and the reaction moment being 120 inch pounds. And so let's go back into SolidWorks. And so I'll just window over to the solid element beam here. A uh, pretty small beam, I believe it's a 1 inch wide by 3 eighths inch high or thick beam there and a 12 inch long length uh, 661 T6 and notice here what I've done is I've created a reference geometry point at the very center of this face and we'll be use that here in a little bit and so I've already got the static study applied I can go to say the von Mises stress you can see uh, the results have been created if I go to list result force I'll just leave it at reaction force for now. Go to IPS units, select a face edge or vertice, I believe. Well, I want to select this face that I've applied the fixed connection to. And hit update, same thing that's worked before in the past. And notice the results we get out of this. We have a very small negative value for FX, a very small negative value for FZ, and 10 pounds force in the Y direction. You can see our triad here, well, the FY seems right, um, but where's the moment, you might ask you? And so, uh, this is where you have to do something a little bit different with these solid elements. Uh, this, the solid element type doesn't have the ability to uh, really deal with the moment at this point, and so we'll have to make one small change. Instead of reaction force, we're going to go to free body force here. And so, I moved to free body force. If I hit update, um, getting very similar results, but notice right here if I kind of hover into this box you can see it needs a vertex or a reference point for location of moment, so how it's going to calculate those moments. And so that's where I've got that point one point, I put it right there in the middle, I have to reselect that face now, and so now let's go ahead and hit update, and now we're starting to see a moment being calculated there. And so I'll just kind of leave it in this orientation similar to the ISO, or I guess I can put it in ISO here. And so what do we have? Uh, very, very small negligible values for the forces in the X and the Z, which would be as expected. Uh, the 10 pound reaction force in the Y, that would be in the vertical direction from our hand calculation, so that matches up. And then down here in the moments, we've got negligible values for the moments about the X or Y axis, and the 120 inch pound moment about the Z axis, um, which is going to be the counterclockwise moment, if I go to the front view here, of the reaction moment, just like we were expecting from our statics calculation here. So 10 pounds and 120 inch pounds there, 10 pounds, 120 inch pounds, both of them are directed correctly. You got the force going up, the moment in the counterclockwise direction there. And so it looks like we're doing good in terms of verifying uh, the reactions in terms of forces and moments that our beams as well as our planar truss was experiencing. And so thank you for watching the video and hopefully uh, this helps you out um, when you're doing your simulations.